Hey guys, what's up? Misha from GGD here, and today we're going to be talking about drum maps. Specifically, drum maps in Cubase 10.5, super specifically, uh, though this will work with all versions of Cubase that I'm aware of, and uh, Nuendo as well. Unfortunately, other DAWs don't have quite as detailed or dedicated a drum map setup, uh, and this is the doll that I'm the most familiar with or completely familiar with and it's also a big reason why I love Cubase is because it has this handy feature so um, For all you Cubase guys out there. I know I've been getting some questions about this This is how we set it up. It will make your life really easy I'm gonna show you how to get this going and how to get it as customized as you need it to be so that you can easily program your drums so uh, jumping right in we're gonna open up contact. Why don't we open up? The P4 kit because it sounds great. And uh, here I'm just gonna set this to Omni or Channel 10 works as well. And just so that it sounds good, why don't we do the Reptile Turbo kit? Let's activate this Tom so we have all the pieces right there. Sounds good. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys something that's simpler to just get going. And um, this is something that we did just in case you didn't want to go through the super detailed method, which I will show you right after. But if you go to settings here, you'll see there's uh, there's presets. And we made all this stuff really handy so that you can save presets, export, et cetera, et cetera. But there is one called GM, which stands for general MIDI. And if you do that, and we have a track here, right? And Cubase, if you look at this here, it says no drum map. So if I click on that, you get your piano roll, right? And everything's mapped the way that general MIDI would be mapped. Um, you know, or as close as possible because we don't have all the articulations that general MIDI would have. But if you go ahead and click GM map, now this is built into Cubase, right? Then you see here, bass drum. We don't have side stick map for that, but acoustic snare, low floor tom, high floor tom. And this is sort of just set the way that general MIDI was set up so if you happen to program to a general MIDI map or you have programming for a general MIDI map, it might actually translate pretty well. It may not be exactly mapped perfectly, but it'll be mostly there. That's a super simple way to go. And that could even be our starting point if we want, just so we're not uh, starting completely from scratch. So, you know, what we can do here is we can assign, and we've actually set this up so that every uh, articulation has a duplicate. That's why there are these two columns here, right? Now you can man manually select the note, which, you know, if you want to do it that way, that's great if you know what you want. Uh, we made it very simple as well in case you want to just be able to detect it. I mean, you can hit this record button and then you can just tap the note there and it becomes that on your keyboard. Or um, the way that will be probably a little bit more handy to do that, that would be more if you want to play it. If you've got like a groove pad or a keyboard, whatever, and you know what you want, then you can do it very quickly like that or if you have an e-kit or something like that. However, this will respond to any uh, MIDI input, right? So if we just click this square on the left here, then that will be the kick now. Now, um, you'll notice I did it twice. Um, because we can have a duplicate articulation, which again is sometimes useful for performing or if you just want to have two lanes, um, what I do is I hit it twice. That's my little shortcut because it just skips from this one, goes to there. It's like, oh, that's the same one, so it's no longer there. Alternatively, you could just, you know, hit it and then uh, turn off, uh, disarm the record, if you will, uh, because otherwise it will just, you know, the next thing that you hit, it'll still be armed. It'll be like, oh, that should also be the kick drum, you know, and then you'll end up with this weird mapping. So you don't, you don't want that. So the way I would do it is just, just click and then it's off, right? And then it's just a matter of just going through this. And this is something that as you go like, all right, we've got side stick here so that we could put there. Now we don't have a hand clap, but you know what? We need a flam. So I'm going to change that to flam. So you just type in there, right? And, and then you know, I like to have the snare and the, the kick next to each other. So in Cubase, you can just drop that there. You can rearrange it. Super easy to do, right? And I think I want the flame there. That makes a little more sense, right? 
Uh, and then we're going to do uh, rough for the next one. Why not? So this says electric snare. We don't have that. And it doesn't matter what we're taking it from or if we're reappropriating it from some other thing. We can just go sort of uh, down the list as we want. So this can now be rough. And then uh, we will make this one wires off. And then all we have to do is, again, record. So now you can see. Ah, we lost our side stick. And there we go. I messed that up, but I fixed it very quickly. Uh, so now I'm just going to go ahead and repeat this process for the rest of this. All right, now that we have everything that we need labeled, we're going to go through and actually arm and record these to correspond. All right, now we have everything programmed. Now, that did take a little bit of time, but the good news is you'll only ever need to do this once. First off, you can save this to one of the five custom slots that we have here. So just save this as custom one. Also, I can now export this as an NKA file so I can import it on another computer or whatever very easily so that this is all set up to this or this this setup that I just set right here. Um, let's just save this as P4 drum map. And if you want to import, you just import it like that. So there you go. That's all very simple. You won't have to do that part again. And if you want to save it on the Cubase side, you just go over here and you go drum map setup. We're going to take this. We can either rename it or we can just do a new copy. There we go. And we'll call it P4 kit. And now we could just do that like that. You can even select it from here. Um, and didn't update there, but now it's now it's updated. So when we double click on this, we have exactly what we expect. Sounds like a bunch of drums falling down the stairs. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, once you have that set up, you should be able to call that up, uh, whether it's on the contact side or the Cubase side, or if you just load it up into a template, everything will be ready to go. So as much as it's annoying to set up the first time, you shouldn't really have to set it up again for this library. Hope this has been useful for you. Uh, I think it will really speed up your programming process, especially if you're in Cubase. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Catch you next time.